today I want to talk to you briefly about something called ORS or oral rehydration salts. Hey, it's Dr. Anthony G. Beck, creator of Oral IV. One of the big things out there on the in, on the market for hydration products is um, different combinations of salts and sugars. They call these ORS or oral rehydration salts. Now, these kind of take their history and their background from a, a situation that happens globally of different diseases of the bowel, like cholera. Uh, malaria, dysentery, uh, Montezuma's revenge. That's always a fun one to think about. Anyways, so ORSs are a combination of sugar, salt, and water. That's basically what they boil down to. Now, over the years, um, different uh, iterations of ORS have been presented, and it's basically uh, led by the uh, WHO, or World Health Organization, um, in their attempts and efforts to combat dehydration in third world countries where uh, particularly uh, kids are, are losing a tremendous amount of body water because they have an infection in their intestines. Um, so they're unable to keep fluids <clears throat> inside of the body. So there's various combinations of uh, sugar, salt, and water that are out there where people can make them anywhere from with coconut water and you add certain things into it, certain sugars, uh, to all kinds of different recipes to basically kind of get this certain amount of um, you know, glucose, um, sodium chloride, and water volume. Now, one of the problems that exists out there with ORS is the fact that people don't seem to realize, and actually, quite frankly, most of the products on the hydration market do the the double talk, the bait and switch. They purposefully don't let you know what I'm getting ready to share with you right now. And that is ORS, or oral rehydration salts, for the treatment clinically of dehydration does not and do not and cannot apply to things of dehydration that we get from, say, the sports uh, performance world or exercise or uh, marathon and things like that. Everybody th seems to have been uh, duped into understanding that dehydration needs to be treated with copious amounts of sugar and salt. Now, where it kind of gets its background from, to kind of let you know where the, the history of this, to, to kind of you know pull back the curtain and let you know where the nefariousness comes from as far as I'm concerned, is a guy by the name of Robert Crane. Now, Robert Crane was an American biochemist back in the 1950s, and he was credited with discovering what's called the sodium glucose co-transport system in the intestines. <clears throat> and basically what they've discovered was is that sodium and glucose um, in uh, uh, transporters in the cells, uh, uh, cellular construct. I'm trying not to get too medically you know, crazy here for, for the audience and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, it's a mechanism of this, this uh, gated channel. It's a protein in the cell um, um, membrane that brings glucose and sodium and water out from the intestines into the blood and into circulation. So we found out that there was a co-transport. Now, one of the, the, the bait and switches out there, as I refer to it when in the ORS world, is people then therefore erroneously have extrapolated that you have to have glucose in the intestines in order to uptake water. And also, some people even want, think and want you to believe that that's what you, you have to have glucose in order to uptake the sodium. Well, that's just completely erroneous. Now, one of the ways that you can test that, very simple, um, is to take your, uh, a blood sample and you can take a, uh, a sodium level and then you can take a teaspoon or a measured amount of sodium with water with no glucose whatsoever. You don't have to take in any sugar or anything like that. Very small amount of water. And then take a repeat blood uh, sample about 10, 15 minutes later and you will see that the uh, blood sodium level um, will shoot up. So what that proves is, is you can take in sodium in the absence of glucose and you will be able to see those rise. So it's not required. On the flip side, you can also do a glucose or a dextrose challenge where you can take a measured amount. I do this little test with patients to test their insulin response with about 44 grams of dextrose. Well, you can take a measured dose of dextrose, which is glucose, in a little bit of water, call it you know three ounces, and you can actually take your blood sugar prior to taking that little dose, take the glucose, and then take your repeated blood samples after that, and we usually do that at about a 30, 45, and 90 minute increment. And you'll see your actual blood glucose levels go up. 
and you didn't take in any salt, no sodium chloride at all. So what this proves is, is that it is erroneous to think that you have to take in glucose to take up water and or salt. It's also erroneous that you have to take in sodium or sodium chloride salt to take in glucose and water. They're all independent of each other. There's all kinds of transport mechanisms outside of this sodium glucose co-transport that we're talking about, okay? So don't be fooled by the hydration products out there that say you have to take in sugar and salt in order to take in the water and stay hydrated, okay? Now, on the last note, how can you spot the ones that are erroneously giving you information? Now, I don't know if they have any malintent or not. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they are just misinformed. They'll oftentimes quote this famous quote about this sodium glucose co-transport. And it goes, the discovery that the sodium transport and glucose transport are coupled in the small intestine so that the glucose accelerates absorption of solute in water was potentially the most important medical advice this century. Which is true for the treatment and abatement of diarrhea and intestinal things so they could get water and fluids into these people whose bowel transit time was so fast that they needed to put the sugar and salt uh, in there to, so that way it would come in and facilitate. So anyways, but that's not required. Now, one of the things about that is most athletes know if you put those type of drinks into your stomach, they stay in there and they slosh and get around because when you have normal, healthy uh, bowel function in the absence of a disease, you should not be putting in those uh, uh, type of combinations because it's gonna give you a water gut and it's gonna bloat you out and things like that. So when you are looking for hydration strategies, you need to realize that there's a difference in hydration strategies that need to be applied when it comes to disease states like diarrhea uh, and flu and all kinds of things like that versus sports, exertion, working in the garden or uh, hanging out on a boat. Okay, so that's today's little tip for you guys is don't be fooled by the ORS crowd into thinking that you have to have sugar and salt in order to stay hydrated. You absolutely don't. Um, and um, one of the things that's really super uh, uh, cool about the product Oral IV is no matter how you apply different hydration strategies, um, once the water is inside of your body, you have to make a determination of how you want it to act and perform. And that's what Oral IV uh, does its fantastic method of action and support. It happens on the cellular level post consumption of that water and helps that water go to the right compartments, stay in the right compartments and stay with you longer. So until next time, stay hydrated.